the doctor is in. Hey guys, welcome back to Doctor Secrets. This is your pal, Dr. Sal. And in today's episode, we are going to take a look at Lyrica, also known as pregabalin, which is the chemical name. This is a very useful drug for rogue nerves that just will not shut up. Pain fibers that just keep sending inappropriate signals of pain when there's no actual physical damage occurring. So we use pregabalin or Lyrica in conditions such as diabetic neuropathy, uh, persistent pain after shingles outbreak, spinal cord injuries, and I use it actually a lot for fibromyalgia patients. Now, uh, what we're gonna look at here is the five most common side effects. This is not an exhaustive list of every single side effect, just the most common ones. Um, but before we do that, I'll just tell you the different strengths that you can get Lyrica in. So they come as 25 milligrams, 50s, 75s, 150s, and 225s, all the way up to 300 milligram capsules. Now, the initial starting dose as recommended by the manufacturer is 75 milligrams twice a day, which is a grand total of 150 milligrams every 24 hours. But as you can see, there's a wide spectrum of different strengths you can choose from and to play with and adjust. So let's get into the most common side effects. So this study um, published by the manufacturer uh, looked at 212 patients. So N of the study equals 212. So first thing we're going to get into is the first side effect that's really notable. And I've seen this many times in practice is coded at 6% is peripheral edema. What exactly is that? That basically just means swelling of your lower limbs. So you start the medication, you suddenly notice that your ankles are swollen. You don't have ankles anymore, they're now cankles. And your feet are swollen, what, like an elephant's? Well, that's edema. You're basically retaining fluid. This can sometimes be a real deal breaker, and I'm not sure exactly why, but I typically most often see this in females. Um, associated with that, with edema is it's also coded uh, 4.2% of people complain of increased weight. Well, they're probably kind of correlated or integrated in some way because if you're retaining fluid, you're also going to retain weight. So this group is also going to be part of this group. So I would say roughly 2% of people, maybe the edema simply wasn't significant enough that they notice uh, uh, weight gain that was marked. So some solutions to this problem of the edema is one is if you're getting terrific results with the Lyrica, maybe you don't actually need 150 milligrams per day. So sometimes I'll try sliding back the dose. So maybe you could get away with 50 milligrams twice a day or three times a day, or maybe even 25. So long as you're still getting the relief that you're looking for, that's fine. There's also other cases where somebody may have coexisting, say, hypertension. In a case like that, what I'll do is I'll keep the drug, but then I'll add for their blood pressure treatment, I'll use a diuretic as first choice. That way you get your cake and get to eat it too. All right, so that's the first two. Now, by far, the most common side effect in 9% of people was dizziness. And that is also the most common reason for having to discontinue therapy with Lyrica. The dizziness is um, so inconvenient and doesn't seem to respond to just continuing to, to push through it. So this is the most common reason for people having to discontinue therapy. Now, uh, same options here, uh, solutions. You can try using a lower dose and see if the dizziness uh, still occurs. But if, it, if that's a failure, you'll have to try a different therapy, discontinue the Lyrica, maybe try a tricyclic or actual old gabapentin or something else of that nature. All right, next up, in 6% of people, 6.1 actually, but we'll just round it down, 6% of people complain of feeling sleepy. And again, I've seen this frequently in um, my patient population that I use Lyrica on. Um, Again, easy way to get around this is dial back the dose, provided it continues to work. But another option that I've also done is uh, preloading and, and postloading. 
So for example, um, in somebody taking, say you were taking 75 twice a day, what I might do is actually change things around and uh, maybe take a smaller dose in the morning. So maybe try 50 milligrams in the morning and then use 150 at night. Or I could even go smaller than that. I could use 25 in the morning and I could use 75 at night or any combination or permutation of, of that kind of solution. The idea is to use less in the daytime when you want to be alert and post load most of the sedating dose into the nighttime. So that's one solution that's worked for uh, several of my patients. Now the fifth most common side effect, and it actually wasn't really that common, in about 2.8% of people complained of having diarrhea. But weirdly enough, on the flip side of the coin, 2.4% uh, of people complain of constipation. Usually this is, um, to some degree, somebody who already had a predilection or predisposition to this. So somebody that has irritable bowel or, or a sensitive stomach might start noticing they're getting diarrhea or constipation. The solution is usually pretty simple. Um, for constipation, you can just use things like cathartic, Senecot at night, more fiber, make sure you get enough fluids in the day, etc. The diarrhea is a little more difficult to solve because the presence of it, you're taking it every day. So every day it resets your gut signal to want to eject it. So that's harder to fix. But honestly, it's not that common. And I can't think of any cases in, over the last 15 years in my patient practice of having to discontinue anyone uh, off of Lyrica because of this as a side effect. So I would say even if it does occur, it's probably fairly mild and not really a deal breaker. So hopefully, ladies and gentlemen, this gives you a quick snapshot if you're about to embark on therapy of, of Lyrica. Overall, there's a lot to like about it in terms of effectiveness, but you might just want to watch out for these um, five little mischievous um, interactions. And as we went through there, there's some approaches you could think of when you're working out a solution with your physician. So I hope that helps and uh, stay well and we'll talk again soon. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now. If you found this video helpful, support us by sharing it with all of your friends and throw us a like below. You're a star. Cheers and cheerio.